All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing some different crazy theories on the Titanic, possibly raising it, dating all the way back to 1914. It's interesting that they even planned or thought of raising the thing just two years after it sank, really way before it's gotten all the lore of kind of the legendary ship because it was only in service for five days with the 1997 movie. And recently, it's been kind of back into the news with the whole Titan situation. There's been a lot more talk and speculation of it. The theory that I wanted to discuss that I saw, there's an image of it. In 1914, an architect from Denver proposed raising the Titanic with electromagnets. His idea was to thrall the area where the ship sank, and when the magnets were close to the wreck, they would be drawn to the Titanic's steel hull and latch on. Further magnets could then be added until the ship could be brought to the surface by a fleet of barges. Another idea was to attach balloons to magnets to float the ship. Both schemes were judged too expensive and got no further than the planning stage. Now, of course, this being in 1914, it really wouldn't matter if it's too expensive. We couldn't even find the thing with the technology that we currently had in the year 1914. We didn't even find it until... 1985 so it's funny they mentioned oh they were gonna do this plan <laughs> until you know it, it was deemed too expensive it's just that we didn't have the technology to find it but it is also funny because 1914 theoretically you have a much better chance of trying to raise the bow I mean at that point you can see from a lot of the images and drawings before the 1985 discovery many people thought it didn't break up in two there are definitely better if you look on YouTube POVs from the perspective of the person in the lifeboat and now they've got the newer ones where it's basically completely pitch black because let's be honest, if there was dispute on if the Titanic actually split in half, it, no one would be able to see anything because it would be very clear and obvious if there was any light that night from the lifeboats, all of the survivors would say, yes, it broke in half. I think the break was a lot less grandiose than the movie and also it was completely pitch black to where they just heard a bunch of stuff cracking and that's how some of these survivors were able to distinguish that the ship very possibly broke in half. 1985, it was finally confirmed. Another theory calls for Vaseline ping pong balls and glass spheres. This was proposed in the 1970s, mostly involving filling the Titanic with various substances and objects to float it to the surface. Suggestions included either filling the ship with 180,000 tons of Vaseline, thousands of ping pong balls, or pressure-resistant glass balls. It was quite clearly ridiculous to try and fill a liner with Vaseline. So that went out the window, as did the ping pong balls idea when it was pointed out that the balls would be crushed by deep sea pressure long before they reached the wreck. The glass ball suggestion was abandoned when somebody worked out the numbers of the balls required to float the ship would cost nearly $240 million. And this is back in the 1970s. Imagine the cost of that with inflation. You're better off just building a Titanic 2. But th this was back in the 70s, so they thought... You know, the ship was completely together. It was, you know, almost virtually untouched. Calls for an iceberg to raise the Titanic. This was a bizarre idea of an unemployed contractor from the West Midlands. He proposed encasing the Titanic in ice, floating it to the surface, and then towing it to Newfoundland where the ice could be melted. You know, that reminds me of an idea. Back when I was younger, I remember reading it. If we brought the Titanic to the surface, because it's been down in such cold water for a really long period of time, we would have to put it in a massive tank. Otherwise, it would completely fall apart if it was exposed to the air. I mean, I don't know how real that is. We brought up the big piece and it looks fine. It's not like it just disintegrated, you know, after it was down there for forever. 
but some of these theories are just ridiculous. And then after it got discovered in 1985, pretty much all of that went out the window. The one, the few theories that I have heard that have been discussed kind of involve similar practices on how they've brought other ships to the surface. It's through the use of balloons. The problem with the Titanic is it's just way too far down. And at this point, the entire front of the bow is caved in. So even if you know, let's just say the fate of the universe depends on us raising the Titanic to where we could invest $30 billion into doing it. Due to its location and the current state of it being down in that cold water for over 100 years, I'm not even sure we could bring it up in one piece. It might just completely fall apart because the other problem is the front of the bow, when it impacted the ocean's floor... It is way caved in. There's so much mud over it. Theoretically, the speculation is that has preserved that area from decay because the area is entrapped in mud, but that makes it that much harder to try and bring that section up. The front of the ship is pretty much completely caved in at this point, unfortunately. And then how about this? We get this every week, it seems like right now. Titanic never sank conspiracy theory goes viral on TikTok. And I'm guessing this has to do with the switch theory. They switched it for, you know, with the Olympic for insurance reasons. The problem with that theory is the ships were different, meaning they were literally different. The Titanic was basically a better version of the Olympic. The Titanic had several features that the Olympic did not have. Even if you wanted to argue, oh, you know, they, they did the switch and they made the Olympic the better ship. Why would they sink the better, more advanced ship? It's very obvious looking at the Titanic in the bow section of the wreck. It has an enclosed A-deck Promedon. In 1912, the Olympic simply didn't have that. So, but, but even if you want to argue, oh, it was really the Olympic that had that that doesn't make any sense. Why would they make the Titanic, which was made after the Olympic, a worse ship? The Olympic was made before. The Titanic, they realized people were not utilizing the Promadon areas. They completely cut off the B-deck Promadon, which can also be shown on the wreck. It's just those square windows, and the window placements are different. And then the front end of the A deck is completely enclosed. So I just think that theory, it's just people not understanding the differences of the Titanic and the Olympic. But even if you wanted to argue, oh, the Olympic was that, why would they sink the better ship? The one with the enclosed A deck Promadon was the more advanced, better ship. The theories just make no sense to me. And then this is 1986 versus 2022. I really wanted to note this. If you just look at this image, you're really not going to notice much in terms of differences, you know, just looking at them top versus bottom. But the one big key difference, if you look at the A deck Providon, it is fa it completely falling apart. So is the B deck as well. Pretty soon, I think the hole where the grand staircase was, it, it might just completely not exist anymore because that entire section of the ship is really the area that is showing the problems. Also, if you really zoom in, that gangway door that you can see in 1986, it's not there in 2022. I wonder, because because I think that's the gangway door they recovered. I wonder if that makes it easier to get into the Titanic because the gangway door is off of the ship. I guess theoretically you could have entered it anyways because it was open already, but it fell off and they were able to recover it. But just looking at this image... The thing that you really can't see is the front of the bow section completely collapsed in, at least from this. Th that's kind of been the other big thing that's happened other than the deterioration of the A-deck Promadon and the B-deck Promadon. Both of those really falling apart. It kind of looks like the walls on the sides are curling up and collapsing. We could really use something like that to happen to more of the ship. And the reason I say that is because that might be our only way at getting some look at some of the interior rooms like the swimming pool, like the squash court. But that is kind of an interesting visual to compare the deterioration of Titanic. I do think it's going to happen a lot slower than people expect. I know people have been saying 2030, maybe 2037. It's probably going to look very similar. The one thing that I think is going to happen, you're just going to see more deterioration where the split was and those walls are just going to keep collapsing in kind of like they've been doing. How about this one? Potential idea for building an on-site Titanic museum. Of course, after pumping the water out from around the Titanic, from the bottom of the sea all the way to the top, 
That is that that is a legitimate idea. Yeah, you could be listen. You could put an uh, elevator into it, and then oh, I was searching things, and you can just you can just tell you don't even have to click on this video. Titanic conspiracy theory and viral TikTok stuns millions, and it's just some girl, and you, of course it's the Britannic wreck. <laughs> You don't even have to watch the video. Uh, but guys, that is going to do it for this one. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.